Now, despite Brazil's economy not growing as fast as many as hoped, that doesn't seem to be putting off at least private investors. Helen Clegg joins us live from Rio de Janeiro to discuss how Brazilians are looking at long-term investing by entering the franchise business. Hi, Helen. Hi. Yeah, so the usual optimism exists here in Brazil, despite a slower growth in the, co in the economy. And I think perhaps people are looking for a more secure way of investing money in the long term, both in, term of, in terms of buying franchises and also selling franchises. The market grew by 16.9% in 2011. So I've been having a look over the last few days about what kinds of people are buying those franchises and what they can offer for them. At just 23 years old, Tatiana Garnier is the proud owner of her first franchise, a branch of an information technology school specializing in children in the over 60s. I worked here, I gained a minimum salary and I didn't have the ability. My parents helped me and after one year of the franchise, I managed to see a return in my investment. Tatiana bought the franchise for around 4,000 US dollars from company owner Flavia Della Lana, who now has 15 schools across Brazil. I think for you to be able to expand your brand, it's better to open a franchise than to try to open an individual store in every state, which would be very difficult and much more expensive. Tatiana and Flavia are part of an increasing number of Brazilians making a living from the franchise business. According to Fatima Roshi of ABF, the Brazilian Association of Franchising, entrepreneurship is in Brazilians' blood. There is a sense of entrepreneurship in Brazilians. I think it's in their DNA. These people make the most of this entrepreneurship in the form of investment, and a franchise offers less risk, and so it's more attractive. Here at this franchising meeting in Rio, Brazilians have an opportunity to look at franchises on offer. Mauricio Matos wants to expand his fashion business from the northeast of Brazil into Rio. To have this know-how and translate this know-how is not as simple as you think. We have had here today and this event 44 entrepreneurs. I have spoken to five of them who I would consider reasonable. As Brazil's middle class continues to grow, an investment pours into the country, the future for franchises looks good. All right, Helen, uh, I want to ask you something about the economy in Brazil because there's a lot of discussion of late. Retail sales in May came in lower than expected, really the lowest level since the financial crisis. And I want to ask you, what kind of impact is this having on the economy there? Well, you know, Brazilians, Brazilians are great consumers. They like to spend money. They like to be seen spending money. Um, but I think because we're always having this battle with, with high inflation here, and I think because of the popularity of Brazil, things are just becoming much more expensive. You know, we had the, you had the, cut, the tax cut on motor vehicles, which has improved the sales in cars somewhat. But you've also got the same tax cut on white goods, things like fridges, uh, and cookers but, but those the, those sales have slowed so uh, you know people here buy a lot of things on credit and think I think finally perhaps they're realizing that that they can't buy buy everything on credit and as I say because of the popularity of Brazil things are just becoming so more expensive here and the cost of living has gone up hugely I think also people are spending more overseas you know more Brazilians we've got a rising C class here and, and now a new rising D class and those people are traveling more than ever. And I think they're realizing how things, how much more cheaper things are outside of Brazil. So possibly that's had an effect on the consumer markets here. All right, Helen, um, great stuff. It, you know, uh, just to give you, a, uh, just uh, to give you an idea, five point. I want to thank you for your time, Helen.